Howdy, y'all. This is uh, J77 doing another video game music review. And uh, for the next few weeks, I'm going to be talking about games that, uh, and their music as well, that uh, I have played that has a co following for not the right reasons, uh, as you may expect, and games that I considered. Well, you guys will find out as the next few weeks go on. But I might as well talk about the first game that is in the least of my disdain list. So, I mean, it's not really because of the gameplay, because like the fans of the card game, I can completely understand why they do not like this game at all. Um, a lot of people who are Yu-Gi-Oh! fans, who are diehard Yu-Gi-Oh! fans, who is very passionate about the rules of Yu-Gi-Oh! playing cards, who knows how the rules of the playing card game goes, did not like this game when it came out. Um, in fact, um, if uh, it wasn't for the fact that I actually had my first deck of cards, I wouldn't even know what the rules were. Um, I went by the rules of the gameplay. When I found out that the rules were not like what the game has represented, I was a bit disappointed. But I never really hated this game for that. Um, in fact, there's another reason why I actually like this game, and it's not really the gameplay, but the freaking music. Now, keep in mind, there's a reason why it's called Video Game Music Review, and it's more about the music than the game itself. Um, and I want to really explore the music, because here, although the game itself, for many fans, you either love or you hate, I don't think you can say the same about the music that was came behind the game. And that's Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Um, again, when I bought this game, I, I bought this game for the simple fact that I became a huge Yu-Gi-Oh! fan of the TV show. Um, I really was addicted to this. Um, it was during that phase where, you know, I actually had the Pokemon phase. Um, I have followed Digimon until at least about Season 3. I never really saw any of Season 3 after that. Um, it wasn't until after I really gotten reintroduced by Mars Girl, who did a good, good uh, um, review and pretty much uh, respected on how Season 3 actually worked, and I actually gave it a nice shot. Um, but I never really watched that again. I was not watching the new season of Pokemon. But then again, Hugh came along, and it really drew my attention. Just the name alone just drew my attention. And I had watched the whole entire series, right up to the very final chapter of the original Hugo series, that I was really drawn into that. In fact, I was even more drawn to it from the unseen episodes that you can only get uh, through um, certain DVDs, especially uh, uh, the Japanese version. So when I heard about this game, um, Yu-Gi-Oh! Put in memory for so PlayStation, I looked at it and said, oh yeah, I gotta have this. I must have this. Um, and I got it and I played it and I enjoyed it. It was hard as hell. Because it starts out pretty much as you, you know, you type in your character's name and you basically start out in Great Ancient Egypt and you're playing this card game which didn't think they had cards back in Egypt back in the day, but okay, it's... it's it's fantasy, anything goes here. And you're playing it, and you're pretty much getting a feel for the game. You're starting with the weakest pile of cards, and every time you win, or every time you do, you pretty much get a card to add to your deck. Um, and if you're lucky, you can add a very good card to your deck. Now, you may find, may find it strange, but um, why is the people who are down hard to go fans like, did not like this game? Because of mechanics. Um, you only was allowed, this is something that, um, ticked off diehards to death. You was only allowed to draw one card and just one card. And anybody knows, um, the game, you can allowed to draw one monster card, but you can also draw a couple of, uh, of magic cards. There's really no limit how many magic cards you can draw. Um, as long as you don't, as long as you can able to do it. You can't really draw any kind of monster, you need to sacrifice the monster. Um, to bring a more powerful monster. And when people saw this game, they were like, how come I can't take this card and add that to that? How come I can't, you know, call an effect card? It drove, it drove down horns nuts where they just absolutely hate the game. Now, for me, I did not know this. So I was playing this game figuring out how am I going to beat this game with the cards? I'm trying to figure out how to match together. I didn't know about, I knew about fusion, but I thought you could get the fusion card. It turns out you can actually shoot both cards together, get a more powerful monster if you only especially don't have it. So there was one way, more ways of doing that, um, how to play the card. But keep in mind, if you don't have enough cards in your in your deck, you don't have enough cards in your hand, and those cards are weak, you basically toast, especially if the guy 
especially if someone like Kaiba comes into it, one of the um, the mages, um, which is way late in the game, um, came close to this. And by the way, yeah, I beat the game. I ain't gonna tell you how I beat the game, but I did beat the game. Um, especially if you just don't know how to strategize and keep the, the person from going, uh, 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 going attack you, you can easily use this game. It's not an easy game to play. Keep that in mind. It's really not. Um, but again, it doesn't really follow um, the rule where you have to sacrifice this monster to get a tall power monster. You can play blue eyes white. If you have a blue eyes white dragon in your possession, you can play the blue eyes white dragon, and that's it. And again, for many purists, that's not how you play Yu-Gi-Oh. In fact, I learned the hard way because when I won the tournament, um, I tried to play blue eyes white dragon right away, and they said, "No, you can't do that. You got to sacrifice two monsters to get that." So really, seriously, I didn't see that. And they showed me a rule, but I said, "Oh." oh. I didn't know, and that's when I started to really learn about the, about the game. And I guess that's why they changed it up in, when they did Battle City to pretty much reflect more how to play the game at most perspective. And we know now there's been new rules that I heard about. I stopped playing Yu Gi Oh! a long time ago when I went to D5 and uh, GX. I didn't really follow too much, even though I actually did like GX. D5, it was just. Two words for me. Um, but in any case, this was the game that I was introduced to. Um, I really fell in love with this game more so on the theme. I actually loved the theme. The Egyptian theme was one of my favorite. The second Kyber theme when you faced him as Little Hugi Moto was one of my personal favorite. I got that in the soundtrack. And the ending theme, uh, when you see how how they, they did the digital effect for the for the monsters. When you see the credits, it's kind of it's kind of hard to go with polygon effects. That was one of my favorite themes. I thought that was one of the best themes I've heard um, when I bought that game at that year. I, I really did love that theme. I went looking for that theme. I couldn't find it. It was until MP3 came along and actually played that theme, and I never looked back since. It's really, really good theme. And that was one of the things that really I was in mind. I played at certain levels just so I could hear that theme. I really did like the theme. I think the only theme I did not like... Um, what's the free? Uh, what's the free duels? It's when you um, basically beat a, a particular character in the Hugo game. You actually they, they automatically get put to the free duel, and you get two automatically when you start off. You get two, but they're the two weakest ones. You lose in the you lose to them the two weakest ones. You really have worked it down, but you get to play those duels. And the purpose of those special independent duels is to actually build your deck. I believe the number of cards they had registered, I say registered for a reason, I'll get to that in a second, is um, 2,200 plus. Uh, I could be off, it could be way off, but I know it's in the 2000s. Um, you're dueling just to get those um, those cards. And you can pretty much, I think it has like, almost like 999 of the same deck, but you're only allowed to have three at one time in your deck, which was another reason why a lot of people was upset because some cards were restricted. You can't use more than one deck in the card. I'm I'm quoting this for a reason, guys. I know a lot of people say, "Why do you keep calling the, the, the purists for?" But there's a reason why because this this game does have a reputation, um, and uh, you really want to use those free duels for that reason because you really want to build a deck. You don't want to go in there with the deck you have started out with. You really want to actually built from the ground up. You really want to make sure you have a strong deck. You really want to make sure you know your weakness of the deck, especially when you're facing um, certain monsters with a field advantage. And that's goes pretty much more so when you go into the final stage of dueling, when you head back to um, to ancient Egypt and you find it's been taken over, you find that um, some people are long gone. You're facing um, Kyber. Again, you're also facing the final boss which you face not once but twice. Um, you really want to build that deck up. You really want to make sure you have the most powerful monsters in your possession because once you get to that close monsters, you're dealing with monsters with two or three hundred attack points um, right off the, off the gate. And keep in mind they go by the standard rules of tournament. Um, it's not the two thousand or four thousand you see on TV. But it's pretty much the 8,000 tournament rule that is actually in um, the real tournament of Yu-Gi-Oh. And uh, every time I played it, I loved hearing the music. I really did. I, sometimes I don't even play this. I just want to listen to the music. The music is very, very um, uh, endearing, very, very uh, uh, 
um, addictive, and it's, it pumps me up every time I hear it. I still love that kind of second um, um, theme. Um, pretty much, uh, I will say this. Um, the gameplay is pretty much, it's not really typical of the gameplay. It's a card game, it's a strategy game, and you pretty much at the mercy of the cards, just like the, any Yu-Gi-Oh deck. But again, the, when I talk about this with other fellow Yu-Gi-Oh um, players, they do not want to mention this game. They hate it. They absolutely hate it. Now, there are some who actually enjoy it and like it. They they, they say it's hard and it's, and it's very fun. And to them, they also got introduced by Yu Gi Oh! Not only for the game, not only for the, game, the TV show, but through the game. Um, but you ask the purists, they send that back to the store. They send it back to the store immediately. I bought this game. It wasn't on the greatest hit splits. I didn't see the. The, um, the rating for this. I don't really pay attention to the gaming ratings anyway, but from what I understand, it didn't do too well. It wasn't when the other editions came out for Nintendo and uh, PlayStation did it actually felt like the tournament that everybody was playing where you can actually do more with your magic cards. You didn't have to throw out just one card and only one card. You can throw out the monster card. You also throw out some magic card and do some other stuff that, uh, that resembles um, the game that you're playing, um, and that's something that I think a lot of people have gone to uh, to respect a lot more uh, and enjoy more than this game. But this game still has a following. It it, it does. It does have a cult following um, in some ways. And to me, it's more about the music. Do I think this game is fine? When I, to honestly, when I played it and didn't know the rules, I found it very hard to beat. I really did. Um, I find it extremely hard to beat. Um, but I don't remember to say uh, for a Hugo fan that uh, would I recommend it to them? Not really. I mean, just let's be honest. If they play this game and they've been used to playing um, the tournament games and didn't heard about any other games and this is any see the game, they're not gonna like it. They're not gonna like it at all. They're gonna hate it for that reason I just explained. Um, but to me, what really sticks to me more than anything else about the Hugo for the memory is the music. The music is classic, or not. It is a classic piece of work, and I might commend, if anything else I get out of this, is the fact that it has memorable music that still holds strong um, today. Um, so, kudos for them for that, kudos for them. The game, I'm going to give it a fair rating. I, I think the game, for the most part, if I if I was doing the Angry Joe rating system, um, I'll give it a 6 out of 10. I didn't hate this game. I didn't grow up hating this game. This is one of my first Hugo games that I have played is one of the games that inspired me to go even further into um, the card playing genre. Uh, even though I don't do play Hugo anymore, I don't regret it because I actually had did when I did play the tournament, even though I wasn't winning much except probably two one or two games um, per tournament, um, I enjoyed it for the simple fact is uh, that I made some good friends out of it. So um, and I wouldn't have done it if I hadn't played with it in memory. Um, that's something uh, that uh, I give a credit credit to. Hey, I saw a couple of Pokemon, but I didn't want to play a Pokemon card game. I don't care about Pokemon. I don't even buy that. I didn't bought the um, Game Boy games that they had. Uh, I don't even know what number they're on to right now. Um, I love Digimon, but I ain't bought the card game that it was considered that to be a card game to begin with. Don't talk to me about uh, about that other Yu Gi Oh ripoff. I believe they called Duel Masters. Yeah, we don't talk about that one. <laughs> even card players don't talk about that one. Um, but it is something that uh, that holds true to me. But again, the music has been uh, the, has always had a a, a great memory because I always love to listen to the music. When I, when I hear it, sometimes I even play the game. I just leave it alone and I just sit down with some music. That's it. Um, and to me, that's satisfying within itself. But what do you thought about uh, Forbidden Memories? Did you like it? Didn't like it? Did you think it was the worst game you play? I know that those who are your fans. Um, I understand. <laughs> I understand why you didn't like the game. I, I, I completely understand. Okay? Uh, I, I'm not going to sit there and say you guys should give it a chance. Trust me. When I played the uh, tournament with my cards for the first time, I learned the hard way. And that's not how things go. Um, so, yeah, I understand why you guys can like the game. But for me, it's for a totally different reason. But I can understand if you guys made the comments saying this, this, this game was a piece of crap. I understand, okay? Um, but in any case, do comment on it. I'd like to hear your opinion on it. But until then, this is J77 saying take care. Be safe. Talk to you soon.